Hi guys, welcome back to Lucas 3D Studio. In this video, I'm going to show you this cool upgrade that can save your AMS2 Pro from the horrifying black tip of death. I'm also going to show you how you can connect the AMS2 Pro to your X1 series or P1 series printer. But before that, let's unbox the AMS2 Pro and see what's inside. In the AMS2 Pro itself, you'll find the replacement tubes, the 6-pin cable, and extra desiccant packs. You also want to unpack these plastic bags and place the desiccant packs back in the rear slot. Now let's connect the AMS2 Pro to my X1C printer. If you have a non-combo X1 or P1 series printer, you might need to buy the filament buffer separately. Mine came already pre-installed since it is an X1C combo, so all I have to do is to remove this 6-pin cable and replace that with the 6-pin cable that came with the MS2 Pro. You want to make sure to use the provided 6-pin cable to connect the MS2 Pro to your printer. Then install the tube. Now if you want to use the heating function, you want to get the power adapter separately since you will need to connect it to a power source and this is where you would connect it. Now let's print the AMS2 Pro Saver Snack Cutter designed by Hexavalent. I'm going to use this clear PC to print all four units, but you can use any high temperature filaments like PETG, ABS, or ASA. This is important since the internal temperature of the AMS2 Pro can get up to 65 degrees Celsius when you're using the heating function. I also printed this cool Bowden Puck PTFE tube cutter designed by Bing 3D since we're going to need to cut some PTFE tubes. Just install a razor blade and snap these two parts together. This cutter cuts PTFE tubes like butter and you don't know how long I have been searching for such a smart and well-designed cutter which works as advertised. Plus it's safe to handle. I mean look at how I used to cut my PTFE tubes. Now let's get back to the snack cutter. For each snack cutter unit, you would need a 70mm length tube which you would need to cut down to a 6mm length and 64mm length tubes. You would also need Bamboo Lab replacement filament cutter blades. You can either get the spare blades that are included in the accessory kit that came in with your printer or buy them separately. Now I've printed another unit in this color for better visibility, so let's assemble the parts together. I'm going to install 4 units in my AMS2 Pro, so in this case I printed 2 units for the spool positions 1 and 3 in the AMS and another 2 units for the spool positions 2 and 4. Let's assemble everything real quick and install them in the AMS2 Pro. It is super easy to install the cutter in the AMS2 Pro, just slide it in place and push it down gently until you hear the clicking sound when it snaps into place. I'm going to use this pool with the black tape which I saved to demonstrate how the snack cutter work in real time. Before loading the filament, you want to make sure the cutter is in a reset position. To do that, just slide this part of the cutter upward until you hear it clicks. You also want to lock it in place so it won't trigger when you load the filament. Just slide the switch to the right until you can see the X. Then you can just load the filament by feeding it through the opening of the guide until it makes its way to the feeder funnel and push it further while pushing the button forward. The AMS will pull the filament automatically and when it's done doing its thing, unlock the switch by sliding it to the left until you see the circle. 
If you want your AMS to automatically use a second roll of filaments when the filament runs out, just load that second roll of filaments and make sure that the auto refill feature is turned on. In Bamboo Studio, under device tab, go to the AMS setting and check this option. Now let's print this spool weight and we're gonna observe what will happen when the black tape reaches the filament guide. So did you catch that? The black tape got stuck at the guide which then prevented the filament to be pulled and that triggered the snake cutter to cut the filament. Since the auto refill is turned on, the second roll will be automatically used to continue the print once all the filaments from the first roll is used up. This doesn't just save your AMS from getting jammed by the black tape, but it saves you a lot of time if this were to happen in the middle of the night or while you are away. Of course, the same scenario applies if the filament is getting tangled. Now I don't have a tangled spool, so I'm gonna simulate it by holding the filament down and that should trigger the snack cutter to cut the filament. To unload the filament, there's no extra action necessary, so just pull the filament out while pushing the button forward like you normally would. Don't forget to reset the snack cutter by sliding the cutting mechanism upward until you hear a click. Now if you don't want the snack cutter to cut the filament, you can deactivate it by simply sliding the switch to the left to lock it. Of course, that would kinda defeat its purpose, but having that extra option is never a bad thing, so heads off to the designer to have considered that in the design. Another thing that's great about the snack cutter is that you can still place desiccant boxes in your AMS2 Pro. And while we're at it, let's place this desiccant box at the rear side of the AMS2 Pro. To remove the snack cutter, you simply reach your hand in the AMS and push the bracket upward gently to release it. Now if you don't have the AMS2 Pro, don't worry, the designer also made the snack cutter for the standard AMS as well as for the AMS Lite. The principle is the same and you can see that they all have similar working parts. Of course, the design of the snack cutter for the AMS Lite is slightly different due to the build of the AMS itself. So I took the chance to print the snack cutter for the AMS Lite so I could test it real quick. That works like a charm, so if you're happy with the snack cutter for your standard AMS or the AMS2 Pro, I think you're gonna be happy with this one as well. If you want a more in-depth explanation on how the snack cutter works, you are welcome to visit the designer's Maker World page. There's a lot of information there including how to tune the trigger force since the density of different filament types isn't always the same. I print mostly PLA so the default design works for me just fine. So if you find this video helpful, I would appreciate it if you could leave a like and a comment in my video. Also, don't forget to subscribe to this channel if you haven't. And as always, I'll see you guys in the next one.